All right, so here we have a situation where I'm standing and I got a bucket of water. And the bucket of water has some water in it. Well, that's what makes it a bucket of water, I guess. And I'm swinging it in a circle. So let's try to draw a circle here. And I should have a head. All right, and so this water is staying in. And so it has to do with the speed that I'm swinging it at. So if we draw a force diagram on the water, we say that there are two forces here. There is the force of gravity, the weight of the water acting on it, and the other force on the water is whatever the bottom of the bucket is pushing on the water. We're going to call that the normal force. So together, those two forces are acting on the water, and you'll notice that they are both towards the center of the circle. Therefore, they are both contributing to the centripetal force. So the centripetal force equals the normal force plus the gravitational force in this situation. The centripetal force is written as mv squared over r. We know the norm normal force is going to call normal for now. And we know gravitational force is just the mass of the water times g. So that is a relationship between the forces on the water and its speed. And a few things about this, one is the mass and the radius, none of those are changing. The weight is not changing. So the only thing we can change about the water is its velocity. And so if the velocity increases, the normal force must increase because the weight can increase. This is a fixed value. So the faster you spin it, the more that this bucket is going to be pushing on the water is the relationship here. So we're trying to figure out how slow we can spin this to keep the water in. So the idea behind this is when we spin it fast enough, the bucket will push on the water. That is what the normal force is. And according to the third law, if the bucket is pushing on the water, then the water pushes on the bucket. And as long as that is true, then the water, if the water is pushing on the bucket, it can't exactly fall out of the bucket. So as long as there is a normal force, <coughs> the water cannot fall out of the bucket. So to find the minimum speed, what we do is we make the assumption that this normal force is zero. Because when the normal force is zero, that is right at the tipping point when the water will fall out of the bucket. So we're going to solve for that. So mv squared over r... So if the centripetal force is only provided by the weight, then, then that means the water is no longer pressing on the bucket at that point. It's, it's floating inside the bucket, which means it can fall out. So now we solve this equation. The masses cancel on both sides. I rewrite this as v squared equals rg. So v equals the square root of rg. So the minimum speed needed to keep something in the bucket or from falling out, if this is a roller coaster, the mass has no effect at all. It's actually only dependent on the radius of the circle and gravity, gravitational acceleration. And if you think about this, if gravitational acceleration were really low, say we did this on the moon, you would not need to spin the bucket as fast. So the more gravity you have, the faster you have to spin the bucket to keep it from escaping. Anyway, so to finish this problem, V equals the square root of 0.75 times, we're just going to use 10 for acceleration to simplify. So we're just basically taking the square root of 7.5. And I get the minimum speed is 2.74 meters per second. So as long as I'm spinning it faster than that at the top of the loop, the water will definitely stay in. Uh, if I spin it at that speed or any slower, then the water is going to begin to fall out. Now, I might be able to get away with it because the bucket has sides, which might catch it before it hits me, but... This is really my minimum speed that I want to mess around with. So that's about it. So until next time, I am Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.